Welcome back. Today we're going to cover some rope and knotting terminology. Many of our viewers have expressed how they like paracord tutorials that don't use a bunch of unfamiliar terms. Others have told us that they'd like to see a video dedicated to terms used when talking about knots. So that's what we're going to do today. First, let's talk about the anatomy of a rope, and then we'll move along into more specific knotting terminology. So I've got a piece of paracord here with me. This is a nylon kernmantle rope. So the word kernmantle comes, it has two parts, the kern and the mantle. So the kern or the core is these twisted strands in here, and the outer mantle or sheath that is, is braided. A lot of ropes are just twisted instead of braided. So you've got a big rope here that has three strands that are twisted around each other. So going over the parts of this rope, we've got obviously two ends in the middle, but with ropes we call it the standing end. That's gonna be the end that's already tied to something or um, is in a coil, like on, on our spool or whatever. And this is gonna be our working end, the, the end that we're working with. I'm pretty self-explanatory there. And then any curve in the middle, or if you fold it over, this is going to be called a bite. Sometimes you'll be tying a knot in the bite, and that means you're tying it in the middle of a rope and, and not the end. So our first category of knots is loops, and as you can guess, a loop is just when a rope loops back on itself and attaches to its own standing end. There's two main kinds of loops that I've got here. On this end, I have a bowline, which is a fixed loop. So if I pull on that, it's not going anywhere. It's not going to slide, and it's not going to lose its shape. But on this end, I've got a slip knot. And it's just a simple overhand knot tied over its own standing end. And if I pull that, it's going to slide and tighten. Loops are primarily used for utility purposes, such as camping, construction, or sailing and they're not generally used in paracord crafting, such as making bracelets and things like that. The next category of knots is bends. And I think the name is a little bit misleading because a bend is tying two ends, two rope ends to each other. They are used any time that you want to extend the length of a rope or sometimes make a closed loop in a rope by tying the ends of, of the same rope to itself. This here is called a sheet bend. It's a nice easy bend to tie, um, but it's not super strong. Any knot tied in a rope weakens the strength of that rope, but some bends are better than others in keeping the strength of the rope. One of the best is the double fisherman's knot, which is often used in climbing because of its strength. Next, we've got hitches. Hitches are for attaching a rope to an object or a rope to the middle of another rope. These, of course, come in different kinds. Here I've got a cow hitch and a friction hitch. The cow hitch is often used for attaching paracord to a bracelet buckle. And the friction hitch is used often in climbing and in tying down loads. The difference between these is that this one slides back and forth easily, but this one, when it's under tension, will grab the rope and will be harder to slide. There's one more kind of hitch I'd like to go over, and that's just a simple half hitch. Half hitches are often added to an existing knot just to keep the tail end from sliding out. And that is a half hitch. They're often tied two or three of them in a row just to make a knot more secure. Next we've got lashings. Lashings are a little bit different breed of knot. They are used to tie two different objects to each other. Here I've got two poles tied with a square lashing. There are a couple different kinds of lashings. This one is to keep the perpendicular pole from sliding on the upright pole. There's also what's known as a tripod lashing to make a tripod for cooking over a campfire. And a parallel lashing, which is used to tie two parallel poles to each other so that they don't split apart. Lashing knots are often seen in construction zones in India and Southeast Asia where they tie bamboo poles together to make scaffolding. Another area where you will see lashing knots in use is in what's called pioneering, where people as part of survival training will 
lash poles together to be used as a cooking tripod over a fire or to construct primitive shelters. This last category of knot is called a whipping. And whippings are basically just wrapping a rope around an object. In this case, it's wrapped around another rope. The most common use of whipping is to keep a rope like this from fraying. Because it's natural fiber, I can't melt the ends like I do with paracord. And so I have to wrap either tape or rope around the end to keep it from fraying. I would generally use a smaller diameter rope than paracord, but it's easier to use paracord here so that you guys can see what it looks like. The other way that whipping knots are generally used is as a handle wrap. It's very common now to put paracord handle wraps on fixed blade knives, just so that you can have spare paracord available whenever you need it in the survival situation. That just about covers it for today's video. If there's other knots that you'd like to see us cover in the future, or ways that you've used these knots in the past, let us know in the comments. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Otherwise, we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.